you have your Bibles, go to Matthew 4. Um, last night, as I was trying to finish up some stuff, the room started spinning. You ever had that fun? And uh, so I'd go in the other room and prayed, and it's still spinning. And when I looked down, it got really bad. And so it was a... Uh, sometimes, sometimes we try so hard to go in a certain direction. I'm not saying God caused the spinning, but, uh, but I, was, I was just asking the Lord what he wanted to do. And I, I, I've been preaching out of Matthew 4 and um, in some practical things. And we looked at uh, Jesus' tests and trials and uh, in particular the temptation we would call it, uh, literally a test from Satan. And, and we looked at a lot of things there. One of the biggies we looked at was the power of the word, the, that he spoke the word and the importance of knowing the word and in those situations that we, we speak the truth versus what the enemy speaks in our mind. And um, In Luke's account, it says that after he went through there, that, he, that the, the, the Holy Spirit, the presence of God was somehow increased is, is the impression that you get from Luke's account. he just come from this encounter where he, the Holy Spirit came upon him at his baptism, but then the Spirit led him to a place to be tested. That's what the Bible says. Sometimes when we go through difficult things, we, you know, we uh, start looking at what did I do wrong and all that kind of stuff. But test is a part of this life, guys. And one of the things that you're going to find out is if you want an upgrade in your spiritual life, tests are the route that's going to take you there. Amen? It's the truth. And, and some of us want to avoid those. Some of us dread those. But the Lord wants us to look at those as this time that I can get my life changed in an amazing way. Because you're going to learn things about yourself, but more importantly, you're going to learn things about God that maybe you kind of knew in your head, but they become real in your heart. There's a, there's a, a teacher that I, I really like. Uh, his name is Graham Cook. We talked about the cookbooks. And... Uh, He's, he's a, a British guy, and I, I'm not gonna, I'm, I do a lousy British accent. I'd like to do that, but it, it'd make it sound so much better. But he would, he would do something like this. He would talk about the, this very thing, and he would, he would say, okay. Hey, John. Yeah, yeah. Did you watch the Illini win last night? Man, it was close, but they came through. Hey, man, the reason... I was wanting to call you as, guess what? I have, this, I have this new problem, and it's a big one, man. This is great. Yeah, yeah. It, this is, I mean, I, the Holy Spirit was just kind of going off in me, and I knew something was up because he was pretty excited about it. So, hey, so, so how are you doing? You, you got any problems, man? No. Oh, man, that's a bummer. Hey, <laughs> listen. I tell you what I'll do. Hey, hey, if you want to, if you want to get in on this, I'll, I'll share this with you. But but you got to promise. You got to promise that you know when when uh, when you get one that you'll do the same favor for me. Click. But that kind of mindset to realize that the things that come at us, the bigger they are, the greater the victory. Bible says in Romans that that God wants us to reign. In this life, the Bible says things that we throw around that we're more than conquerors. I'm amazed that people say that, and then, man, when a problem comes, they whine like a big dog. You know, they're just, oh, man. But we have to see it. Some of those things are, are things that we've done. You know, wrong choices kind of set us up, and God wants us to overcome in that area. Sometimes, just like with Jesus, he, he takes him, allows allows things to happen because he has this greater thing coming. You know, Jesus comes down, and we're going to read here in just a second. He comes down uh, from that temptation or, or from the wilderness. I always think down, but, you know, he's like out in this, this deserted place because 
The greatest tests are when you're by yourself, aren't they? Or you feel like you're by yourself. You feel like you're, you're in it alone. It's, it's one, of the, one of the things the enemy tries to do is to get us off by ourselves because we're easy prey that way oftentimes. So anyway, and with this COVID thing, it's been nuts anyway. You know, it's been more difficult, but that doesn't mean you can't call or, or talk to people. But he comes down and he's launched into his ministry from there. Um, when I worked for the state years ago, I remember we had just went through a, a, just a really hard financial time. We'd moved back to Illinois and uh, had, had some jobs that didn't pay very well. And it was just, a, it was during Reagan's administration the first couple of years. And, and I think he made a lot of right choices, but the economy was tough for a while. And so, um, so I ended up getting a job for the state. And, and this particular agency, you started at the very bottom, you know, and you worked your way up. And the bottom was better than what I was making, but I, I was really needing for it to get bumped up. And they had, you know, uh, some automatic raises that would happen, like at three months, six months, you, because you had learned how to do a certain amount of stuff, and then they could, they could give you more things to do that were more difficult. And uh, if you've ever worked for the state, you kind of understand some of that. So I had been there, and it was time for that, raise, that first raise to happen, and I was pretty jazzed about it, you know? We had four kids, and uh, life was, was, was challenging. And, um, and each area had a, re, a, they call it a region, and they had a, a supervisor over that region. I'm not sure that was the title, but... Our guy was down in Marion, but the one that we had retired. And so now we didn't have anyone. And so the guy who was over in East St. Louis became not only the one for over that way, but over, over here. And um, the acting boss for me, you know, put in for that raise and, and the guy wouldn't let me have it. And, you know, I got kind of aggravated. Because it was more than just about me, it was about my family. And so as days pass and he keeps putting it off, Christmas is coming. <laughs> and, you know, it just gets worse. And I'm telling everybody about, oh, can you believe that jerk? You know, blah, 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 blah. You know, I'm big, you know, super spiritual guy here. And I'm, and I'm whining about it. I'm whining, and, and I get feeling, I, I get very um, bitter and feel kind of justified in it. You know what I'm saying? And so, so the Lord in my prayer closet, I'm sure he had a hard time getting through because that was pretty big on my head. He had to get the four by four and whack me upside the head and say, hey, listen, what's my word say? You're supposed to forgive him, right? And so it says even those, even your enemies who despitefully use you. And that, that little phrase really got me because I was like, I'm guilty, so I began praying for this guy because I knew, you know, he's a heathen. I've been around him one time and, and he needed to get saved. And so I start praying for him. And as I prayed, not only uh, did my attitude toward him change, but, but I forgave him. I wanted good for him. As I did that and that left, after the first of the year, I got a raise. And within less than a month, I got another raise. And with less than two months, I got another raise. I mean, I, I got six raises in like a year, and you're not supposed to do that. But I just went boom, boom. And I learned that I can't, I, can't, I can't afford to hold any of that stuff with me. Now, when you go through tests and trials, whatever you want to call them, even temptations, God wants to change you in the process. He wants to change you and he's preparing you for something greater. And he wants not only for you to change, but he wants to take that that you learned so that you can share that with other people. God, you know, it's amazing. God is the incredibly generous God. But you remember when they, when they uh, had the loaves and the fishes? 
He's also, he, does, he won't waste anything. Remember how they took all that stuff up? He's very generous, but he doesn't, wa- he doesn't want to waste an opportunity in your life to change you and to change others. Amen? Amen. That's really good. Okay. I'm trying to decide which way we're going to go. Let, can I just, I got you in Matthew 4, but could you just go to 2 Corinthians just real quick? I just want to. Basically, just 2 Corinthians 1. And uh, verse 4. Verse 4 says, oh yeah, let's go up to 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort. Everybody say all. That comfort is not, you got to understand, it's not just you poor thing, you know. It, it's more than that. It, it's to comfort. It's to come alongside and encourage you. It's to build something in you to believe. It's, it's to overcome on the inside and then the outside. So, so he says, who comforts us in all our tribulations, in all our tests, in all our problems. Anybody got a problem? If not, you're in trouble. No, you know, we we need them. That we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. So he's saying that the way that God, what God has done for you, he's preparing it not only to help you, but guess what? You're going to be God for somebody else to share with them what God can do. If you've went through a financial thing, if you went through a marital thing, if you've went through a healing thing, if you went, it can be the smallest to the greatest, but there, God is going to set it up where you're going to come across somebody that needs to hear that. You know, and Chance and, and Levi both were sharing, but he, he was talking about the, the praise. It's, we need, we overcome the, the end by the, the blood of the lamb, the word of our testimonies. It is important for us to give that testimony. The Bible says it's, it is that spirit of prophecy, that, those testimonies, because what it does is it, it puts out there or declares or proclaims the very thing that happened in your life can happen in their life. Amen? Okay, back to Matthew 4. Okay. My head's going about 14 different directions. I apologize. I've been eating too much. Anybody else eat too much? This, this. I, we've had a party like every day. It's like, oh God, I'm tired of looking at you know. And it's my, and it's your favorites, and it's. We got dessert, leftover desserts that you know from all the. It's just too much. I think the sugar is giving me a buzz. I don't know. Maybe that was what the dizziness was about. What. I, I was, I'm sorry, what I, when Chance got up here, I was thinking about David in Psalms. And David talks to himself and he says, basically, why are you so depressed, soul? Why are you so down? You need to worship God. You need to praise him. You know, why are you so down? You know, look up. Good advice. Okay. Matthew 4. Verse 17. And we're going to read some and then we'll go back to this beginning and I'm not going to go real long. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, now this is after the temptation, after the trial, God is launching him, the Father's launching him into something that he hasn't been doing. We have no record before this that Jesus did any kind of ministry. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net in the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, follow me, and I will make you, not you will make you, I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two brothers, one on a John Deere and one on an International. (laughs) 
And John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, the good news of the kingdom, and healing some of the sicknesses. And all kinds of diseases, sicknesses and diseases among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria. And they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments and those who were demon possessed and epileptics and paralytics and he healed them. Now, I really thought today we were gonna, I wanted to get into healing. I, I've, I've been going back into the gospels. You know, sometimes the older I get, the more I realize how little I know. And, and you know, when you're a young believer, you're an expert on everything. <laughs> And those, and those people that have wisdom and patience just look at you and smile, you know, and, and try to encourage you, you know, try not, some people try to put water on your fire. We want to throw gas on it, even though we know that probably it's not going to go so well that way, you know. But I, I was pulled back about a couple things. It says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. John the Baptist had been saying, you know, it's at hand. And they were talking about the king's domain, not a place, was close. They all connected it in the Old Testament to the Messiah, which Jesus was. They had their own viewpoint about what that was going to look like. But he's saying, literally, you know, all the bondages that are there, the king's around and he has the power to break all those things. To change your life forever. But just because the kingdom is near doesn't mean it will change you. He says repent. Because it is. Repent means literally to change the way you think. But in scripture it means more than just to think different thoughts. So that's a part that we a lot of times skip over. Repentance means renunciation. In other words... I renounce what I did or my old way or that. I, that's not who I am. If you have a temptation, we need to turn away from it, not kind of pet it and say it's okay. If you want the kingdom of God, the rule of God, that, that empowerment, you need to repent. That means to turn your back. It means reversal. Hello? Hello? And, and unfortunately, in the church sometimes now, we, we talk about we, we, as though things are okay when they're not. Hello? And, and oftentimes, the very thing that you're battling, you know, God wants you to overcome. He wouldn't have put it there just to beat you up or make you suffer. It's there because either you've opened the door to it or, or God's set that he wants you to win either way, even if you've made bad choices. And, and the, the thing about it is if, if it's not just I'm overcoming this thing, it's that I'm going toward a direction toward him. And I can't go toward him and still stay in the past. Amen? Amen. Talk about a split personality. I'm, you know, we, we have to go that direction. Because in this way, God, God can, can bless us. Not that he doesn't want to, but we kind of tie his hands up over here. It also means, repent means to submit to what God says. It means teach, submit to his teaching. Later on, Jesus says, why, why do you call me Lord? As though, you know, I'm, I'm in charge of your life. And yet you don't do what I said. And then he gives us that whole parable about what you build your house on. Whether you build it on sand or you build it on the rock. And, you know, sand is easier. And it looks good and smells good for a while. But when the pressures build up, they can be overwhelming. And you don't stand. The other part I want you to see 
And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net. And, and he calls four guys at the beginning. More people joined him. Now, he hasn't launched into his ministry as what we would call ministry. And, and they're about to see, you know, he's, he's teaching them, but they're not quite getting it. They are not the sharpest knives in the drawer. And that gives me hope, <laughs> you know? Sometimes Peter's a slow learner, but gosh, he's a great guy. But the thing about this is that he could have done this by himself. Now, he has a long-term plan for the church, but I want you to just think about this for, for just a little bit, is that what God wants to do in the earth, what Jesus is gonna do, he wanted, to do, he wanted people around him, he wanted to share, he wanted to teach him, and, and this is the way you do it. And the point is right now, what Jesus wants to do in the earth, he wants to do it with you. He wants partners. He, he can zap whoever, but he longs to have children. He loves to have sons and daughters and, and to do this with him. And the flip side of that is, you know, most of us in this room have a, have a knowing of what we're called to, at least a, a part of what we're called to do or to be. Now that's, gonna, that's ever changing and God's adding stuff and moving stuff around. But to know that he wants to do it with you. And you're not on your own pulling it off. The Bible says that Jesus, by the Spirit, he said, if I cast out a demon by the Spirit of God, or the finger of God, one place, he said, the kingdom has come because it's, it has usurped Satan's rule and it's brought in the king's rule in that situation by the spirit. And, and see, the thing is, if you're saved, you have the spirit inside you. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you have an endowment or an empowerment to do supernatural things. And, and, and sometimes we have this mindset that we're doing it all ourselves. Now that can, that can go one or two ways. I can get real cocky, <laughs> like bless God, you know, I don't need this, I don't need this. These poor guys over here need a crutch, you know, that kind of thing. And, and sometimes Christians kind of get that way. Like stand back and watch my anointing as though you're the one pulling off, it's the Holy Spirit. But it's also when God takes you to those places and he will that are hard, they're harder than anything you'd seen. Or he challenged you and said, I'm calling you to do this. And you're like, ain't no way. <laughs> ever had any of those? I have, I have, there's no way I was going to ever be a preacher. I thought that was just not so. It scared the snot out of me. I ran from it for years. Sometimes I could still run. I don't know about Richard, but, or Pastor Don. But when I realize the Holy Spirit is with me and he's leading me and it's not all about me making it happen, it's more about me partnering with him. Amen? Amen. And I just, it's Tyndall 12. <laughs> I felt like the Lord wanted me just to back up, just to say, because guys, what, what happens after this is this huge revival in Galilee. I mean, we would say this is the mother load. I mean, come on, everybody gets healed. And, and if you look at where it says that all these people are coming from, they're coming from long distances, dragging people to be healed. And people are encountering the kingdom of God. We would stand on our hands. We'd stand on our head to see stuff like that. We, we just... But we're going to see those kinds of things. But we have to learn how do we handle trouble. 
How do we handle problems or difficulty? Do we run from them? Do we complain about them? Do we see that it, it's, it's an opportunity for an upgrade? I don't know if you know what that means. If you've ever flown, especially if you, I mean, A and Chuck Noll, on those long flights that are over 12 hours, God have mercy. And if you're a big guy like me, like Chuck, they put you in these seats that you can't even put your elbows out. You're like this for 12 hours. And you can't even hardly eat your food. You know, it's kind of like, and when you go to move, you hit somebody else or I'd stick my leg out in the aisle and it'd always run that card over my foot. And, but I would get up to stretch because it's just, it's a long, you know, and, I, and it was big plane. And so you'd walk, I, it was kind of like a big square you could walk around. And on that, on the front edge of that, one time I looked in the curtains and I saw what first class looked like. And I lusted after first class, you know. And because these guys are, I mean, you know, they got beds made. They got people waiting on them hand and foot, anything they want. You know, it's just like, well, from where I'm going to there, it's an upgrade. God has spiritual upgrades for us Amen. in this next year. And, and the Lord wants to remind you it's more than just, you know, because sometimes it's more than just this one thing because we always get focused on this one thing and then we get past that and we're kind of like, okay, downhill from here. And it isn't, it's like, and in this next year, this last year has been something else, huh? isn't it? We've never seen it. I don't know what this next year is gonna look like. I have some ideas, but I can't say I've heard God say this or that. But there's a stirring in my heart that I know the thing that we've prayed for for 20 some years and, and people have prophesied in this country for decades. It's, it's, we're gonna see some things we haven't seen before. But before those happen, just like in Jesus' life, there's gonna be some speed bumps and there's gonna be some mountains. And know in your heart that God wired you up and put his spirit in you that you can handle it. You, you can do it with him. And lean into it and not away from it. Because the thing I hate about it is if I pull away, I'm gonna see that sucker again. It's gonna come around again. It may look a little different and it'll come around again and again <laughs> and again. And again, if you're in that mode, just know it, God doesn't want to keep taking you around the mountain. You need to cooperate and let's go over and win in that situation. This year may be some of those things that we've maybe struggled with and we're going to win. Maybe just new opportunities. And I also believe that you're going to have opportunities to pray for people to bring healing into their bodies and their minds and their relationships. I also think that God wants to remind us that the very things that you've went through are really precious and you need to share with people and even look for people that are going through it Amen. because he wants you to encourage and comfort and give confidence to people that they're not in alone and God's going to provide the grace, the empowerment to win in that situation. Amen? Amen? I think that's all he's got to say for today. Thank you, Lord. Can we just, just close your eyes a second? Let's just see if there's anything else he wants to do. Uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just, I just have this sense that the Lord um, wants to just underline that, that repentance is changing the way you think. That God wants you to take the attitude and the thoughts from heaven and not from the earth. The Lord wants to let you know that you gotta quit comparing yourself to other people. 
and that you, uh, you need to change the way you think instead of dreading or being fearful or, or rehearsing um, failures. He wants you to change the way you think. He wants you to change the way you think about how he sees you. We've been taught lots of stuff through the years about this. But it's time to really go after it. And whatever you've been through, he's got more exciting stuff. And he'll be there in the whole process. And if you're in something right now, I'm telling you, you're going to win in it if you'll let him help you. If you'll lean on him and if you'll be obedient in what he's telling you to do either in your spirit or what he shows you in the word. I can't disobey the word. His word, it is the word of God and expect him to bless. He still does sometimes. But there comes limitations. God wants us to be all in. God doesn't know how to love any other way than with everything, just all. So Father, I just thank you right now for everybody in this room. And Lord, I thank you, God. I, I have to admit, there are times I know this truth, but there's times that, that I complain there's times I've missed it. There's times I've had to take the test over and over. I thank you, Lord, that in, in this, God, that we realize that you are so for us, that you love us. And your love isn't based on our performance. You're still with us. You're still for us. But you're waiting for us to turn to you. And to turn away from some things that have held us captive. And Lord, that what you have in store for us is beyond what we can hope, think, or even imagine, the word says. So Father, I pray you encourage every heart here today to let them know that when you allow a problem, it's because you think they're up to it. And that God, that you want to give them an upgrade from where they're at right now. Lord, I pray this morning if there's anybody in this room who doesn't know you, Lord, that today would be the day that they find out that their sins can be forgiven and they can be free from that old kingdom, that old press of the enemy. Lord, I pray today if there's anyone that's not been filled with the Holy Spirit, that today, Lord, that they let the, the, the prayer team guys pray for them, that they could receive that power to walk this thing out. I pray, Lord, today that if there's anybody that's away from you, that they wouldn't just beat themselves up today, but, Lord, they would, they would repent. They'd turn, they'd run toward you and say, you know, God, I'm sorry, but, Lord, I need you. And I'm thankful, God, that you're always there with open arms. I'm thankful, Lord, for that. I pray, Lord, that as we look at this new year, especially after the one we've been through, that, God, that we'll look at it with an expectation. Lord, many of us learned things this year, overcame things this year. But, Lord, I thank you, God, to see more fruitfulness this year than we've seen in our lives and in those around us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 I didn't make you stand up, so we broke a tradition. <laughs> if you need prayer today, folks will be here to, to, uh, to pray for you.